If you're considering whether or not to get an iPad Pro for school, then I hope this video provides you some information that can help you with that decision. I'm going to show you seven areas where I use the iPad Pro in my own academic career and where I think it really shines compared to other devices. Now, I'm not going to go through and talk about technical specifications, price point comparisons, or comparisons between the iPad Pro and other devices, such as a laptop. I'm going to specifically look at seven areas where I really like using the iPad Pro. Maybe another device could be used, but in my case, the iPad Pro is a superior device for how I'm doing the work. Whether or not that works for you, hey, that's what this video is all about. You can watch it and make your own decision. Now, it is important to note that the iPad Pro isn't going to be a universal solution for every area of study. For example, if you're taking computer science and you need to do an awful lot of programming, the iPad Pro is probably not your best choice. But if you wait to the end of the video, I'll show you how I overcome that obstacle and it's pretty cool actually. Now, if you're doing electronics and you need to connect up a lot of electronic devices, again, the iPad Pro is not your best bet. But what do most people actually do in school? Most people will attend lectures from an instructor, they'll get information and take notes, They'll have reading assignments and labs that they need to do. They'll need to consolidate that information, potentially reading academic journals and annotating those academic journals, preparing some sort of artifact that demonstrates knowledge. What I mean by that is a research paper, a presentation, or some sort of project. And in those cases, for those types of students, the iPad Pro is a fantastic device. And in some cases, as I said, even excels compared to other devices. Let's have a look at those seven areas. So the first area is note-taking. Note-taking is really the app that everybody thinks about when they think about the iPad in school. I'm gonna use Microsoft OneNote. It just happens to be the application that I like to use. And there are tons of videos here on YouTube on different applications and which one's best and which one you should use. The reason I use OneNote is because it synchronizes across all my devices both Mac and Windows devices, and it gives me a lot of functionality in terms of keeping things organized, keeping things synchronized, and it has everything I need for note-taking. So I won't have a battle of what the best note-taking app is, I'm just using this one. Now, the cool thing here is that I can go in and I can choose multicolored pens, I can choose different thicknesses of pens. This is something that really appeals to me when it comes to using the iPad for note-taking. I used to carry around a whole little bag full of different colored pens because I like to use color when I'm using when I'm note taking in order to work with different subject areas especially when I'm doing something called mind mapping so if I go in here and I'll choose an orange pen I'll go in here and I'll just draw some you know boring shapes on here so please don't make fun of my note taking they're not going to be as pretty as some of the stuff you see here on YouTube and if I go in I can change the thickness of the pen so I can go in here and say you know happy note now, you might think, why would I want to take notes here? Why wouldn't I want to just type in those notes on a laptop or something? Well, I'll link to an article down below, or maybe a few articles down below, but there is a lot of research and evidence that says using diagrams and using handwritten notes actually assists us in learning better. So that's a major reason why I want to be able to take handwritten notes for any type of research or study that I'm doing is because there is evidence that demonstrates you learn the topic better and more efficiently by doing handwritten notes rather than just type notes. The second area where I really like the iPad Pro is for reading electronic resources, academic journals, and books. What about reading on the iPad? When there's a lot of different apps for reading. The ones that I really like to use are my Kindle app, and I'll show you a couple of tricks with that. It's gonna be pretty neat. I'm gonna show you, Co well, I won't show you all of these, but I have a Kindle app, I have uh, iBooks on here, I have Kobo. Those are all commercial ways for me to purchase books. And I use the three apps because sometimes you'll find one, the same book is cheaper on one as opposed to another. The other thing that I can do here, and this is what I really like about the larger iPad, is if I go into something like a magazine here. So in this case here, I'm looking at Wired Magazine. The screen size of the iPad is about the same size as your typical magazine. So it really works very well in that regard. And if I go into something like Kindle here, you'll notice that I can go in, I'll just go into my library here. And if I go into my Kindle library, I can have an organized bookshelf with all of the different books that I'm currently reading or planning to read. And I'm able to go through and navigate to those books and do things like create highlights and such. I'll go into a little bit more detail here when I talk about tip number three, annotation and collection. 
but as a reading device, it's a really good screen, it has a long battery life, and I'm able to carry a lot of books with me on one device. A lot of pens when I'm note taking, a lot of books when I'm reading. The other thing I really like about reading is that I can access resources such as researcher application. There's different applications and I have a video on the channel where I talk about doing research on an iPad. But here I have a list of all sorts of different academic journals and scientific journals. And one of the things I really like to do in my spare time is just read some abstracts for different articles and research that's being done so that I can then say, you know what, I want to read the full article or I want to see what's being done in a specific field. Here I'm going to do a little bit of a search. Now I can go in and search by subject area with this particular app. I can go in and do an actual search for a specific topic area. I think I'm going to type this in rather than write it in. If I write it in, it'll convert it to text. But I'll go in and I'll type in learning and technology. Let's see what sort of academic uh, research is being done for learning and technology. So I'll type in learning and technology. I'll conduct a search. And there's a few different... Uh, uh, are academic journals that come up right at the top. I can even show more, they'll give me quite a large list. But if I go back, I'll choose Technology, Knowledge and Learning, which is a journal. And I'll look through and read the abstracts of something that I'm interested in. And this is all being done on the iPad. I'm not having to go into my library. I'm not having to search there. I've got this really nice application that does this with me. So if I go in, there's some web-based training on the, roads, uh, on the roles of self-explaining mental effort and smartphone usage. I'll read the abstract. Maybe this is interesting to me. So I'll now click on that particular abstract and I can copy the DOI which is going to allow me to go and find that uh, particular article in my academic library or even at a public library that has access to academic and scientific journals. I also really like this feature of this app where it gives me some related papers so I now have a bit of a breadcrumb that I can go through if I'm doing my research. So you can see that it's a really useful tool for just doing plain old reading on your iPad. The third area where I really like the iPad Pro is to annotate diagrams and different PDF documents. I find it very useful to use the stylus for this. But let's take this a little bit further. Let's talk about, you know, if I find this article, so I'll take the DOI that I just copied and I'll go into something like my Safari browser. Now, I just went into my particular academic library and I searched for the DOI number and here's the article that, was, uh, that I read the abstract for. Very interesting article. I actually want to, I want to save this as part of my research. This is probably one of the most powerful buttons that we have on the iPad. It's the share button. And when I click on that share button, I'm going to share to OneNote. And I've got this little notebook that I've created a demo for YouTube. And I'm going to go in here and I could again type in here or I could say smartphone article. And when I type, when I use handwriting, when I type in smartphone, it, I'll go into smartphone article. I'll just put the word smartphone in there. And when I go in here, I'm now going to send that to OneNote. If I go in, I now can go into OneNote. I've now got a page that links back to the article and I'm now collecting information in terms of consolidating, you know, doing some synthesis, doing some collection of information. This is very handy. I can also do it if I'm in my Kindle. Let's say I go in here and I have this very interesting highlight in here. I can choose the highlight. I can share it. I've got a quote in here. I could do it as a text quote. I could do it as an image quote. Once again, I can share. Choose to share that to my OneNote. Choose to share that as good quote. Again, I'll type or I can use my pen, whatever pencil, whichever I prefer. I'll send that in. Go back to my note taking application. Once again, I'm using OneNote. You could use whatever you'd like. And now I can go into my article here and I can start, or my quote here, and I can start annotating it. Powerful, meanings, you know, I can put question mark, I could say follow up, I could put whatever I'd like in here in terms of taking notes and making sure that I'm keeping track of information. This annotation is very powerful. But you might say, well, what happens if you have something that you can't share? What if you're in your Kindle library and you go in and you're on a PDF? let's say this Dremel tool, and I want to ask some questions, I want to do some research on this. Well, here's a trick that you can do on the iPad. If you press the power button and the up uh, volume button at the same time, it will actually take a snapshot of your screen. I can then go into that snapshot of my screen. I can choose to have a black pen. I can choose the thickness of that black pen, and I can now make annotations on here. 
So it's a Dremel tool. I want to see if they have one that has a battery instead of uh, a cord. Do they have that? I want to know what the cost is of this tool. I want to know what sort of accessories are available for this tool. So I can make all sorts of annotations on here and that has a share button. Once again, to my note taking application, once again, I can say, you know, something like Dremel Research. I'm researching a Dremel tool that I want to buy. And by the way, I have a Dremel tools. I love those things. And I can, again, I can choose a different section if I want, so I can put it into a different section. I'm just going to send it off, off it goes. I no longer need that screenshot because if I go to my note taking application, here is my annotated screenshot that or screen capture that I took. Now I can also do further annotations in here. So let's say, for example, I want to do some highlighting in here and I want to, you know, highlight the name of the company. I always spell it with two M's instead of uh, one. And I can do this. Now, here's an interesting thing. If I go to erase, so, and with the Apple Pencil, you can tap, double tap it to erase it. You can set that up. I can erase my highlighting, but notice the annotations to the image that I made in the photo snap. I can't, I can't erase those. That They're kind of permanent to the image. But I can go in and I can do my own annotations and I can say, oh, I didn't really, I can also hit the, the eraser there. And I've, I've got this here. And I can do further things on there. You know, where am I going to buy this? Maybe I'll buy this at home hardware. Maybe I'll compare the price of home hardware to Lowe's. I'll sort of see, you know, who has the best price here. And I'm doing a bit of research. I'm now going through and annotating. This is really also something that's very useful in terms of collecting the information, connecting to information that I can really make a, a, a really central place to keep a lot of information. I can do markup, I can use this for studying, it's very good. Now the fourth area I could do pretty much on any device, but I find it very easy to synthesize and collect information on the iPad Pro. So you saw that through the notes, through the reading, through the annotations, and the synthesis and the collection to this central note-taking application, it really allows me to have a portable, fast way of collecting information. It's something that I do recommend that you make sure that you, whatever you're doing, you use that share button. That's really the key. I'll, I'll use Apple Books here and I'll grab this book on how people learn. I've got this interesting support for technology and learning. Once again, have the option of sharing this. Just tap it, get my share menu. I'll go in here and again, um, notice that in this case here, oh no, I don't have OneNote. Don't worry, you just hit the more here and you can actually put this into different apps. There's some suggestions in there and you'll notice that not every single app will allow you to do this. So there's a few things you can do. You can copy it and then you can come into your page here, give it a tap and then when you do the tap in here, you can actually paste it in and that's a way of getting the information there from any of the books or anything that doesn't support sharing it out to an application. You can do a copy paste. I actually particularly like the copy paste with something like Apple Books because what it will allow me to do here is it'll actually give me the fact that it's an excerpt from this particular book. We don't just collect things though in the digital world, we also have the physical world. So what if I have a physical textbook or I'm in an archive or maybe I want to uh, capture a whiteboard that the instructor has written something down on. Well that's where I can again use my iPad and this time I'll use Microsoft Lens. And I do have another video on the channel where I go through Lens in detail. But if I go through, I can take a picture of something like a book. So I'll take a picture of this book using Microsoft Lens. And what this is going to allow me to do is now I have this book. I can confirm that this is what I want. You can adjust the image. I confirm this is what I want. I'm now done with that. And again, save it out to OneNote. I can give it a name. So maybe this is a course textbook. I'm going to put something like that in there. I could write this down as always. So I could do course textbook. So let's say that is in there. We'll put it into that section of the OneNote and I will now save it as my course textbook. It's now going to take a few moments to load it up. This isn't quite as instantaneous, but it will synchronize with my OneNote and you can see that the image will appear there. This is actually a previous image when I was first uh, doing this demo. It'll actually appear as another page in there. This is very, very handy because one of the things you can also do with Microsoft Lens is if you've got a book and you want to actually capture the text within Microsoft Lens, what you can do is open up Microsoft Lens. You can capture the text that you want on a specific page. 
Once you've captured that text on that page, you can now adjust it to make sure you've captured the appropriate text in there. In this case, it did a good enough job. So I'll confirm that. And now what I can actually do is I can go in and I can ink this. I can put some notes in there if I want to. I'll just undo that for now. I'll confirm that that's what I want. I can go and do things such as put text in there as well, but I'll say I'm done. And I can actually even throw that into an immersive reader and have it read it out loud to me. But I'm just gonna go into OneDrive. Oh, didn't want to do OneDrive. I wanted to go to OneNote. And I'll go to OneNote. I will call this something like book text or important page or whatever I want to say. And then I will save that. And that page is now being transferred to my OneNote. I go back to OneNote. And like I said, it'll take a few moments, but it will eventually synchronize and then I will have it there in OneNote as well. So as you can see, it eventually shows up and now I have the actual page from the book. I find this very helpful if I'm in an archive and I want to take pictures of images from an old textbook or a book that I'm not allowed to sign out of the library. I can go in, I can grab that information and I have a nice collection right here in OneNote using Microsoft Lens, just carrying the iPad and consolidating everything there. The nice thing is, of course, I can also go in, don't do this with old books, you know, if you have an old book that's in the archives, you're not allowed to write on it. But I can write on this book to my heart's content. So I can go in here. I can make any annotations I need in there. Your librarian will be very upset if you do this with an old textbook, like an old, old book that's an antiquarian book or something. But I can go in there and I can do whatever I need to do in order to learn without actually damaging the original book. So that's a handy thing to do as well. There's a lot more you can do with Microsoft Lens. You can also take uh, pictures of instructor notes and whiteboards and such, and that's a very powerful thing to do as well. The fifth area where I use the iPad Pro is to create and synthesize information. Now this is an area where maybe if I wanted a larger screen, I could connect the iPad Pro to an external monitor, especially if I'm writing a research paper. But with the larger screens on some of the iPad Pros, I find it's actually easy just to write right on this device itself. So now that we've seen how I can take notes, how I can read, how I can make annotations, how I can capture screens, synthesize, collect, and do all those wonderful things, what about using the iPad Pro as a creation tool? Well, that's where something like the Magic Keyboard comes in, because if I'm going to write a research paper, it's not going to be that easy to do that, even on the, with the on-screen keyboard or with handwriting, especially my handwriting, as you have unfortunately had to witness in this video. So when I attach the Magic Keyboard, I'm now going to be able to go in and use many different applications, such as Word, Pages, whatever I need to do some writing. Let me show you one of my favorite applications called Scrivener. There have been so many applications written for the iPad that it's, it's impossible not to find one that can help you create whatever you might want to do. Everything from film editing to photo editing. But when it comes to school, a lot of what we do isn't going to be highly complex. So if I go into something like Microsoft Word, I'll be able to go into Microsoft Word and create all sorts of different documents for school. So I can go in and get some templates in here. You can see that I can do a, a document here for a research paper. There's so many different things I can do. Uh, one of my favorite applications though, I do want to share sort of an application with you, is one called Scrivener. And this is a writing application. You should take a look at it. It's really kind of an interesting application. And you can go in here. What I like about this is if I'm doing a research paper in Scrivener, I can, um, I'll call this research paper on bees. So we'll do a research paper on bees here. I can synchronize with my Dropbox. So if I do have Scrivener for Mac or for Windows, I can interchange between different devices. And what this does, <clears throat> is think of it more like an environment where I'm writing things in pieces and then synthesizing them together. So for example, if I create a draft, I can put, uh, you know, idea number one. So I can have idea one and I can flesh out the idea, whatever I want to do in there. I can go in and I can add another page. We'll call this uh, idea two. And this really gives me the ability to go through, synthesize a lot of ideas, break things into small parts. And then what I'll do is I'll consolidate those into a larger paper. 
A feature that I really like about Scrivener is if I go into the draft here, you see that my ideas are represented by these cards. So I can rearrange my ideas. I can, you know, start, start building out my research paper. I'll just put a couple more in here. So we'll do idea three. And it allows me to really start working on things in the way that we actually normally do work on things, which isn't to start at the beginning and finish at the end. We, we revise different sections. We look at one idea, how one idea might fit before another idea. Makes more sense to maybe put this one over here. Makes more sense to put this one maybe over here at the beginning. And that really helps me uh, go through the creative process of writing my research paper, capturing ideas on these little note cards, and then synthesizing it all into one whole. The sixth area that I can use the iPad Pro is to attend a meeting, such as a Zoom meeting or a Teams meeting. A big part of school nowadays is of course attending online or virtual classrooms, so a lot of times we'll use a tool such as Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Let me demonstrate in Teams how the iPad Pro can work fairly well, but there are a couple of gotchas in this, in this regard. So first of all, if I go and start a new meeting in my Teams environment, you'll notice already that the camera has me as if I'm looking up in one direction. I'm actually looking directly at the iPad. And because of the camera placement, it's actually making me look like I'm a little bit looking off to the distance. And if I move my head, right, you'll notice that slowly the camera will kind of follow me around a little bit. That's one of the kind of nice features there. So I'm gonna start this meeting and I have my microphone off just so I don't get feedback and such. And you'll see that now I'm in the meeting, you can see a little bit more of that movement. If I take a look at improving this a little bit and take the iPad and put it into portrait mode. So if I take the iPad and I put it into portrait mode, then I'm ac I actually have a pretty good meeting experience. Um, as I move around, the camera will move around with me a little bit more. I'm going to actually put this on a little bit of a stand here. So I'll put this on a stand here. And you can see that I can have the meeting here. I can do all of the things that I would expect to do. I can have the chat in here. But this is where things get a little bit annoying because if I want to participate, I'm going to have to use the on-screen keyboard to participate in chat because I do have this in portrait mode rather than having it in landscape mode. Of course, if I go back to the meeting here, you can see, and the camera does follow me quite well in portrait mode, and I'm looking directly at the camera. So that's, that's quite good. I do like the Teams meeting is a good experience. I would like the camera to be a little bit more adapted in uh, landscape mode so I could use my keyboard in chat, but overall, it's a pretty good experience. And the seventh area where I find the iPad Pro useful is connecting to other systems. One of the questions I always get when someone says, is an iPad a good choice for school is, what happens if I have to do some programming? What if I'm in a computer science course? And it's not the universal solution for everyone. However, if you are doing a little bit of computer science and you still wanna use an iPad for school, there are a couple of services you can use. One of those is Windows 365. So by connecting up to Windows 365, especially with the addition of the mouse on the iPad Pro, I really have quite a nice environment here where I can go in and I can remotely connect to a machine running Windows 10. And I'm able to go into all sorts of different applications such as Visual Studio. And I can go in here and I can start programming. So I'm going to be able to use my iPad but I'm going to be able to start a programming project and I can work with my iPad on this remote system. So there you have my take on the iPad Pro in an academic environment. I'd be interested in how you're using it and maybe there's features or applications that you're using that extend it even beyond what I showed you in this short video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like, subscribe, do all that good stuff and we'll see you in the next video.